nameplate necklaces. Everyone wears one. Isn't that the Carrie necklace from Sex and the City? Yeah. She wore one too, but she wasn't the first. It's not just a celebrity thing. Chances are you own one or you've seen someone else wearing one. They're fashionable now, but for decades, they've been a statement of girlhood and coming of age for women of color and ethnic minorities. The first nameplate that I got was as a 10 year old and I basically had to write my mom a letter explaining why I was responsible enough to have a pretty expensive piece of jewelry and I had the grades uh, to, to, to back it up. Unless you have a common name, Mary, Jennifer, Katie, it's hard to find a bracelet or a keychain with your name on it. Personalized nameplate jewelry became a way of making those names legitimate and visible. When I looked around in the 70s and 80s in Brooklyn, that there weren't that many representations of black girlhood in popular cultures. For me and for the girls that I knew, there was uh, something about wanting to assert one's sense of self that was intentional. Hey, you don't stop. Right, At the same time in New York, hip hop was being born. It was more than music. It was graffiti and breakdancing. It was a style and an attitude. And jewelry was part of that. Much like graffiti tagging, the nameplate became a way of saying, I exist in this world. I want you to know my name. And like everything in fashion, nameplates were influenced by what had come before. It really literally started from select few influential street hustlers and pimps. These guys were wearing initial nameplates and initial pinky rings. There's a correlation with artists like Big Daddy Kane and Slick Rick. Their major influences from style was pimps. Because before rap stars, pimps were the stars in the ghetto. The majority of trends that we've ever seen in hip hop, they started in Harlem, Brooklyn took it to another level. Those medallions and personal jewelry morphed into the stripped down styling of the nameplate necklace. And Brooklyn's Fulton Street soon became their mecca. And then it just becomes an epidemic where it becomes like a staple in the ghetto communities. Everyone has to have one. We were one of the few stores that opened in the early 90s here. And we were like the center or the mecca of nameplates. The nameplate is done. When Yo! MTV Raps aired in 1988, it brought the fashions of New York's boroughs to a wider audience, nameplates included. Yo! MTV Raps really expressed, like helped to kind of express that and like, you know, fuel that representation. I mean, of course, anything that then becomes a kind of national situation, right? Quickly becomes, you know, consumable. But that was nothing until Sex and the City came along. It was a pear-shaped diamond oh. with a gold band. Oh! You wear gold jewelry? Yeah, like ghetto gold for fun, but this is my engagement ring. The show's costume designer spotted the jewelry and the Carrie necklace was born. That name necklace was something that black kids, Puerto Rican kids, borough kids had been wearing forever. It was just a staple. Uh, one o'clock reservation, Bradshaw. Soon, the necklace became synonymous with the show. She kind of becomes a universal signifier for a style that many communities of people have contributed um, aesthetic innovations to. There is an ongoing legacy of uh, appropriating the the labor, the 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 energy, the time, the creative production of our society's most subjugated people. From here, it's a short step to commercialising what is often a deeply personal item. Supermarkets like Walmart started selling them, often only with those common white American names. Nameplates often relate to some type of immigration experience, an experience of forging some kind of identity, whether that's holding on to a perceived original identity or um, synthesising a new one, you know, like having to change your name. Names reflect identity. 
Latina names like Camila, Valeria, or Maritza have continued to use Spanish spellings and pronunciations, which can be seen as a sign of heritage and pride. Would you mind telling me what your father's last name was? The last name of my forefathers yeah. was taken from them when they were brought to America and made slaves. African Americans also began giving their children unique names, like Ashanti, Leticia, and Monique, to represent their individuality and in some cases, solidarity with the African ancestry. What I think is so brilliant about the nameplate necklace is that it shows up, right, in the Black and Latino community at a moment when the community is itself, right, trying to figure out its very contemporary and modern representation. Label yourself, but you choose that label, and then you accessorize it and make it visible. Just seems completely appropriate and brilliant. So, what was once perceived as ghetto became fashionable. The trends that black youth have created have always been absorbed by mainstream society, and the nameplate necklace is no different, using black culture as an alternative playground for whites, right? So when mainstream society wants to cut loose and be wild, that's when uh, black culture can be absorbed. In the present day, people with black, Latino, or ethnic sounding names are still less likely to be called back for job interviews, considered for housing, and they are more likely to be labelled as troublemakers by teachers. Facing these disadvantages because of your name and still showing enough pride to wear it around your neck can feel like a small but revolutionary act. But some people just like the style. Cultural sharing is inevitable and can be a great thing, but it helps know the history behind what you're wearing. Just think twice about calling it the carry necklace. Thanks for watching, leave your comments below and subscribe to watch the other videos in this series.